Happy Holy Days. You know, my goal every time that I bring the message is for you, the congregation, to say, oh, Devin's preaching today. I wonder what he's going to do. Right. Y'all remember when I had the motorcycle up here? Uh, Y'all should come to church more often. I'm just saying. (laughs) Which, by the way, is the point of our study today. Um, Everybody should come to church more often. Um, Josh uh, started this uh, series. Pastor Josh started this series, Happy Holy Days. And today we finish up in the book of Luke. And so if you'd like to turn in your Bibles or in the Bible there in front of you uh, to Luke chapter 2, I will also have it here on the screen so you can follow along. And we're going to look at um, Luke chapter 2. Lord Jesus, I ask that you bless us right now. Lord, help us to be uh, doers of your word and not hearers only. We ask this in your precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So Luke chapter 2, let's uh, read uh, Luke chapter, I'll read, uh, you, you follow along. Luke chapter 2, verses uh, 41 through 52. 41 through 52 of Luke chapter 2. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, he went up to the feast according to the custom. And after the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. Uh, When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with him and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and men. All right. I get right. Are you on? I got it right. Is it okay? Okay. Is mine I, okay? I'd hate to mess it up. You know, I can't hear with the sun here. Wow, this is covering. Okay, wow. All righty. Mary, what do you mean you don't know where Jesus is? I thought he was with the cousins, Joseph Carpenter of Nazareth, and you, you are just as responsible as I am. I can't believe it. God has entrusted us with a savior of the world, and we lost him. Watch out for lightning. What are we going to do? Well, he's 12 years old, and it's only about 12 miles from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he knows we're staying with the cousins tonight. He'll find his way here. No, we need to go back. He'll be fine. He's a big boy. I don't care if he is God himself. We are responsible for him. Are you going with me, or am I going by myself? Okay, okay, we'll go, but first let's make sure the rest of our little rascals are here and with the cousins. Okay, scene two. We're traveling. We we would have like the lights dim and all that, but we didn't have that much of a budget. (laughs) I've looked everywhere. He wasn't at the Living Water Prayer Garden. He wasn't at the Donkey Photo Stable. Or at Little Little Caesar's Pizza. (laughs) I couldn't find him either. He wasn't at the Golgotha walking tour or at the Hebrews coffee shop. Joseph, it's been three days and we still haven't found him. I'm so worried. Oh, don't worry. I'm pretty sure the fact that we haven't been struck by lightning yet means that he's okay and we'll find him. You know, maybe he's, at, maybe he's at one of the city gates. You know, he is a boy. I, I bet he's at the dung gate. 
No, no. He's way too intelligent for that. Oh, I, I don't know what else to do. Well, except pray. Let's go to the temple. Okay, let's go. Okay. Scene three. <laughs> there he is. Uh-oh. He's, he's bothering the teachers of the law. No, he isn't. Look, they're listening to him. What's he saying? He's talking about the scripture. I may never understand that boy, but he sure is something. Yeah. Well, let's get him and get home before we get struck by lightning. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody able to visualize what's happening here in the scripture? Uh, we see that um, Joseph uh, was required uh, by God's law, and you'll, you'll find this in Exodus and in Deuteronomy, to attend three festivals a year in Jerusalem. That was their law. They had to do this. And so they traveled to Jerusalem from Nazareth. And so you can imagine that's, uh, it's about uh, 70 miles or so uh, from Nazareth to Jerusalem. And in your car... It takes about two hours because we. I just did this like a few months ago. We actually traveled uh, up there. It takes about two hours by car, but imagine how long it takes in a caravan of people walking, maybe some donkeys, maybe some camels, maybe some horses, but most people walking. And so you're imagining here going from Nazareth to Jerusalem three times a year for the festival and then going back home. Um, also, uh, it's, it's desert. This area is desert. There are hills. It's, there's, a, you know, when you and I think of desert, we think of like the Sahara with sand, you know. But in, in Israel, the desert is more, it's got, got little rocks. It's basically like the hill country with no uh, grass and no trees. Okay, you got this? So you just need to imagine this place. It's got rocks. It's got sand. It's got no trees, no water. As a matter of fact, when we were there uh, this last time, uh, our, our missionary friend that was guiding us around took us and showed us this, this bush. And this bush had this fruit hanging on it. And so you're, th and, and this bush is everywhere. And so you're thinking, wow, this is, there's some fruit here. And so he, he actually stopped the car and got out, he got one of these little fruit things. And it looked, I don't know, kind of like an apple, a small apple, maybe a pear type thing. And you get it, and it's just skin. It's empty on the inside, just air on the inside. And so, yeah, really. So you're walking along for 70, 80 miles, and you see this bush with fruit, and you're like, oh, yeah, right? And then you pick it, and it's like air inside. And you're like, oh, man, that's too bad. But when they traveled, uh, you had to watch out for robbers, right? Uh, you had to watch out for, I don't know, UPS trucks. I, I don't know what you'd have to watch out, but you'd have to watch out. And so what you would do is you would travel in groups. Okay. So you travel in groups and in groups, how many of you in a group of people, how many of you want to travel with your children? See, you understand now. No, nobody wants to travel with their own children except for, uh, yeah, Jacob. He, you know, he's not quite right anyway, but that's, uh, <laughs> Uh, he wants, he'll watch the children, okay, and we will walk together and talk about adult things, right? You know, like the weather and, wow, you know, I, we had um, at Tyna and um, Jimmy's house one time, uh, right before a wedding, we were having a uh, uh, rehearsal dinner at their house. It was really interesting. The, the guys from the wedding were in the kitchen, and they were talking about cars and trucks and jobs. And the girls were over by the sofa, and they were talking about, um, oh, wedding uh, colors and, and, you know, uh, decorations. And, and so Jimmy and, and, and Tina and Allison and I, and, yeah, I take uh, this for gout, and I take uh, this for blood pressure. <laughs> And, um, and so you have, so I'm talking about adult conversations, right? So you have the kids uh, and, and the women, if you will, walking in the front of the car caravan of people going from, in this case, from Jerusalem back to Nazareth. And um, in the back of the caravan, you got the men who are walking together, right? And they're pulling out like, I don't know, stogies or whatever that the women wouldn't let them have when they were 
walking together. So you understand why they're divided now, right? Yeah. Okay, Jesus was 12 years old. And so being 12 years old in, in that culture, he's pretty much almost a man here. And so really, he could be with the children and the women up front, or he could be with the men in the back. It, he could be either place. And as a matter of fact, he probably did both, right? You know, because he would probably be hanging around with the men, you know, listening to dad tell him one of those jokes that, you know. And then he would go back up to where the mom and the kids, hey, mom, I'm hungry, you know, and gets a snack. And, and um, can, can you imagine growing up as one of Jesus' brothers and sisters? I mean, y'all realize that after Jesus was born to the Virgin Mary, she and Joseph were married and they had other children. One of those being James, who wrote the book of James in the Bible. But can you imagine being one of Jesus's, I mean, you're there at the breakfast table or at the dinner table, right? And you're there. Mom, Jesus turned his water into wine again. <laughs> right? Or it's about time. Mom, Jesus is floating on top of the water again, you know. I mean, just imagine it, how being Jesus' sibling is kind of a... But anyway, so they're going in this caravan, and they get to the place where, okay, uh, you guys know it's, it's about time to settle down, and you start thinking, okay, now what am I supposed to be responsible for? And, oh, yeah, how many kids do I have? Yeah, okay, and, and where's Jesus? And they couldn't find Jesus, and so they got a little worried, and the Scripture tells us that they, they, um, they walked for uh, about a day, uh, and if you look, it's about uh, 10 or 12 miles or so from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, um, and, uh, and I've traveled on that before, um, and it is, it's, it's desert. I mean, it's desert, but anyway, it's only about 10 or 12 miles, which is about what you would do in one day if you're walking, carrying your stuff with your kids, right? Everybody with me here? Anybody awake? Okay, good. And so uh, they were probably going toward Jericho because, you know, they're going north-ish toward, um, to, toward uh, Nazareth. And, and they're about to settle down, and they have the realization that Jesus isn't with them. Can you imagine? Imagine one of your kids being lost, and you can't find them. This actually happened to me at the, at the 1968 Hemisphere here in San Antonio. Uh, my parents lost me. And uh, I remember being lost for ever. I mean, it was scary. And uh, probably it was about three minutes. But um, in any case, I was uh, lost. But, you know, that realization when you realize you, you, you're at home and you got your feet up in the, in the easy chair and you remember you left the kid in the car in the garage or, you know, whatever. You, you just remember that you've lost some of the kids or, or something important. You have that realization. They had the realization that they lost Jesus. Have you, have, have you ever had that realization? I mean, the realization that you've lost Jesus? I'm not talking about your salvation. The Bible tells us we cannot lose our salvation once we become a child of God. Once we, be, we ask for forgiveness of the Lord, have him be Lord of our life, we're forgiven, we're a child. We're, the Bible uses the word born, born into the family of God. You can't be unborn in a family. Once we're in the family, you cannot lose your salvation. But I am talking about losing Jesus in terms of your relationship. You know, like maybe you have a friend who's a close friend, but you don't end up seeing them for a while, you don't talk to them for a while, you kind of lose them as a friend. You understand what I'm saying? Have you ever had the realization that you've lost Jesus? And really, if you think about it, we all have that realization every day. Some of us more than 12 times a day, right? I mean, that realization where we decide, oh, well, I said that Jesus was going to be Lord of my life, be my God and be my Lord, but just for the next few moments, I'm going to be my own God and choose to do what I want to do instead of doing what Jesus would have me do. Isn't that true? Isn't it true that we end up losing Jesus almost every day? And then we have to turn around, we have to find him. And actually the whole idea of maturity as a Christian, becoming a more mature Christian, is how long it takes you to turn back around and grab hold of Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? If you're awake, say amen. amen. Okay. 
<gasps> I was like, they're already bored, and I haven't even quite got into this yet. Um, so maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it, it's even more than that for us sometimes. Maybe sometimes we lose Jesus for quite some time. Maybe we stop seeking him as a friend. We stop communicating with him on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, and we only talk to him when we hit a bump in the road, right? You, you realize God puts bumps in your road to make you turn around and look at Jesus, right? You realize that, right? Yeah. And, and some of our bumps are bigger than other bumps. Is that true? Yeah, and uh, if God allowed his only son to die on a cross so that he could have a relationship with you, how big a bump do you think God would be willing to put in your life so that you would go back to have a stronger relationship with the son that he allowed to die on a cross? Pretty big bump, don't you think? And so you and I were like, oh, why did this happen to me? Why is this happening to me? And he's like, why not you? What's special about you? Okay. And so we find out God allows things to come into our lives so that we will come to the realization that we've lost Jesus and we can't find him. And he's not right. I mean, we, we're not talking to him. We have this relationship problem with Jesus. Uh, we find that Jesus uh, only has a very small part in our lives. You know, even attending church every Sunday and, and coming to midweek Bible study, you can still lose Jesus. You can do that for weeks and months and still have lost Jesus. You can go through the motions. You can come down here for the fellowship. You can come down here for because you want to see your friends. You can come down here and do all that stuff. You can come sit in worship service and not actually worship Christ. Have you ever done that? Have you ever come to a worship service and not actually worshipped? I can tell you, uh, this is actually a place where I excel at being guilty. Um, I come into worship service and I'm thinking about, okay, is the temperature right? Is the doors unlocked? Are the lights working? You know, there's a crack in that board over there. Last Sunday I was telling Josh, have you seen that crack in that board before? Where did that come from? And so I'm all worried about all these things and I'm forgetting that I've come here to worship Jesus Christ. Maybe you do kind of the same thing. Oh man, so-and-so is sitting in my seat again. I took that magic marker and I wrote it on the bottom of the pew, but I don't see them getting out of my seat. Or those crazy people at the church, they want to grow. They want to, I don't know, build a new church building or something like that. Those crazy people, you know, and, and you spend all your time worrying about the details about what's going on or what somebody said or what somebody didn't say or how somebody didn't shake your hand or notice that you were there instead of, worshiping Jesus. And you find, you come to the realization that you've lost Jesus. Um, so what happens when you come to the realization that you lost Jesus? What did Mary and Joseph do? When they came to the realization that they lost Jesus, they began the search. They began the search. And you and I do the same thing. I mean, when we actually come to that realization, and maybe that realization is for you, for you is this morning because Pastor Devin's up here saying, hey, have you lost Jesus, right? Um, I'm reminded of a movie that uh, the lady said, um, have you found Jesus? And the other lady said, oh, I didn't know he was lost. <laughs> and she said, we don't joke about Jesus around here. So maybe this morning, maybe this is the time where you're just realizing that Maybe this last year, maybe this year of 2017, you really were not as close to Jesus as you needed to be. You guys know what a friend is, right? A friend, a friend is the person you can call when you're, when you're in trouble, you need help, or when you just want to celebrate and tell them, hey, this is what happened. I, I uh, talked to a friend yesterday, and uh, they were uh, worried about... Uh, uh, this gift that they needed to give and they knew what they needed to give but they weren't sure how they were going to pay for it and suddenly they got an equal amount of money in the mail for the gift that they just got. And they said, thank you, Jesus, because they realized where this came from. They realized where it came from. 
And so we begin to search. And you have that realization, I'm not as close to Jesus as I want to be, but I need to find him. And so where do we look for Jesus? Well, I'll tell you where I look, in my easy chair at home with my feet up watching TV. Because that's the most comfortable place to look, is it not? I mean, it is, right? Okay, or, or maybe, I can, and maybe I can find him in that thing that I've been wanting. You know, there's this thing I've been wanting, and if I can just get it, then I'm going to be happy again. I'm going to find Jesus again. I'm going to commit my life to him again. If I can just get uh, that thing that I'm looking for, I can find Jesus again in my satisfaction. Maybe, maybe I can just blame this on someone else. Isn't that right? Isn't that why we get married men? Yes, so we have somebody to blame everything on. Isn't it true that if we can just blame something on somebody else, that we could just feel better about it, right? Oh, it's not my fault that I lost Jesus. My mother, spouse, friend who takes me to church, who goes to church with me, doesn't want to go to church today, so I'm just going to blow off my relationship with Jesus today because I'm blaming it on somebody else. Because isn't that better if I can blame it on somebody else, right? And, and we, so we start this search, and we search in places that are the easiest places to find. Um, but what we forget um, is that Jesus is right here all the time, waiting for us to just turn around and take hold of his hand. You understand what I'm telling you? If you're awake, say amen. amen. Okay, they're staying awake. I remember a sign one time, uh, actually at the, at the nursery uh, garden center place at home uh, in Beeville, they have a, had a sign out there and he would put different sayings on it, kind of like a church sign, you know. Uh, and, and this sign one time, it said, Are you feeling distant from Jesus who moved? Who moved? If you're feeling distant from Jesus, who moved? And so we see that Mary and Joseph had the realization that they lost Jesus. They started the search, and they began looking for him, and they, they, they found him. And then when they found him, they realized the treasure that they had found. You remember Mary said she's going to treasure all these things in her, in her heart? Remember that? You know, Jesus is a treasure. And the problem with us is, is we have this treasure. If you're saved, if you've asked the Lord Jesus to be the Lord of your life, to be your Savior, and you've, you've committed your life to him, then you're saved. You have this treasure in Jesus Christ, and all you have to do is take hold of it. But so many times we don't take hold of it. Why? Why don't we take hold of it? Because we are holding on to something that's so much less. I'm reminded of the story of the man uh, who... Uh, his daughter was a, a child. He gave his daughter some uh, cheap fake pearls, you know, and, and the little girl loved the pearls. She wore them all the time. Uh, and, um, you know, being a, a little kid, you don't give them <laughs> real pearls, right? Right? Everybody with me? Okay. Some of you out there, why don't you well, give them a Ferrari? Okay. Now, little kids, you don't. But anyway, gave them some, you know, nice Costume jewelry pearls. Anyway, she loved the pearls. She wore them everywhere. Wore them to school. Wore them to church. Wore them everywhere. Wore them to bed. She wore them to bed with her pajamas. I mean, what makes your pajamas look nicer than pearls? So she wears, so every night her dad, uh, after she got older, uh, her dad would go and tuck her in and he'd say, um, I'd like for you to give me your pearls. Oh, no, Daddy, no. These are my favorite. I love these pearls. I wear them all the time. I'm not giving away my pearls. And, she, and, and every night, Daddy would come in, and he would tuck her in, you know, tell her he loved her and all that. And he'd say, I want you to give me your pearls. And after a while, the little girl began to catch on that Daddy was serious, that he really wanted her pearls. And she's like, I want you, he's like, I want you to give me your pearls. And she's like, oh, no, Daddy, I, I can't give you my pearls. These are my favorite. I wear these all the time. I can't give you these pearls. And every night, Daddy would say, give me your pearls. And finally, one night, with tears in her eyes and trembling hands, she took off her pearls and she gave them to her daddy. And she said, here, Daddy. And he reached into his pocket and he pulled out a real set of pearls and gave them to her. 
It wasn't until she let go of the stuff that didn't matter that she was able to take hold of the treasure that her father had for us. It's not until we let go of the stuff that doesn't matter that we can finally take hold of the treasure that we have in Jesus Christ. And so you're sitting there and you're saying, well, thank you, Pastor Devin, uh, telling us we got treasure in Jesus. What treasure are you talking about here? Well, let me tell you what treasure we're talking about. You have treasure. I, I looked this up in the Bible. It's one of my favorite things in the Bible is if you look, you can find scripture verses that say in Jesus or in Christ Jesus or in Christ, okay? And so a lot of times, like, for example, it says you can have peace in Jesus. And so you and I, we're running around and saying, I want some peace. I need some peace in my life. I'm having a problem here. I need some peace. Where can you get peace? Where can you get real peace? According to the Bible, only in Jesus Christ. You understand? And so what treasure do we have in Jesus? We have resurrection in Jesus Christ. We have righteousness before God in Jesus. We have eternal life in Jesus. We have no condemnation in Jesus. We have love of God in Jesus. We have grace in Jesus. Sanctification in Jesus. Hope in Jesus. Wisdom in Jesus. Old covenant removed in Jesus. New creation. We are a new creation in Jesus. We can stand firm in Jesus. We have freedom in Jesus. Freedom in Jesus. We are sons in Jesus. We have righteousness in Jesus. We have justification in Jesus. We have spiritual blessings in Jesus. We have the promise in Jesus. We have truth in Jesus. We have God's forgiveness in Jesus. We have joy in Jesus. We have the prize in Jesus. We have a guarded heart and mind in Jesus. We have glorious riches in Jesus. We have the fullness of God in Jesus. We have God's will in Jesus. We have faith and love in Jesus. We have life in Jesus. We have grace in Jesus. We have grace in Jesus. We have persecu persecution in Jesus. Wait a minute. Persecution, is that a treasure? Well, actually, if you think about it, nothing of value is free. We have persecution in Jesus. By the way, anybody in here been persecuted recently? Guess what? If you're living for Jesus Christ, you will be persecuted, the Bible says. And so if you haven't been persecuted recently, you need to take a look at your life. You need to take a look at how far you're putting Jesus up in your life because if you do you will be persecuted let me tell you persecuted in Jesus understanding in Jesus eternal glory in Jesus peace in Jesus endurance in Jesus we have treasure in Jesus now I know all of y'all are sitting there not paying attention anymore because you're saying I wish I had a copy of that list I have some copies right here on the table after the service or during the invitation, you can come get one of these copies and you can come pray about it, whatever you want to do. But I have some up here for you. We have all these treasures in Jesus. We have this treasure and the Father's saying, if you'll just give me that piece of plastic junk that you are hanging on to, I will give you this treasure. I told you that you can't lose your salvation. That's what the Bible says. But you can mess up your relationship with Jesus Christ. I am my father's son. I will always be my father's son. There is nothing that can happen where I will not be my father's son. He can throw me out of his will. He can throw me out of his house, but I'm still his son. By the way, God would never do that to you because God's perfect love. But you are always a child of God. But what I can do is I can go steal my father's TV and create a relationship problem with him, right? And so until I fix that problem, until I take his TV back, buy him a new one or say I'm sorry or whatever I have to do, I got a relationship problem. Is that true? There's not a whole lot of love being able to flow there, right? The same is true with your Father in heaven. Once you become a child of God, you're always a child of God. But as we do the things we do, as we lose Jesus, as we stuff him in a closet and say, here, Jesus, sit in this closet for a while because I want to watch my favorite TV show that you're not going to like. When we lose Jesus, when we push him away, we're putting a wall between us and him. And so, you know, is that a, is that a good thing? No, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Why is that a bad thing? Because one of these days you're going to be sitting in a doctor's office in an emergency room or somewhere on the telephone and you're going to need Jesus to hear your prayer when you say, God, help me. 
So we need to make sure our relationships are, are cleaned up and straight between us and Jesus Christ because we need that treasure in our life. We need anybody in here need hope? Anybody here need peace? Anybody in here need freedom or truth or anything like that? Where do you find those things? In Jesus. You don't find them in new age. You don't find them in angels. You don't find them in anything. You find them in Jesus. So that's where you need to search for them. Just like sometimes you, do, you don't do a good job of keeping up your friendship with a friend, um, we sometimes do that with Jesus. And so we need to have some relationship work on our side, true? Is, is having a friend work? Yes. <laughs> having a good friend is work, isn't that true? You got to call them, you got to text them, you got to actually spend time with them, right? right? You know, you gotta, to, be, to have a friend, you got to be a friend, is that not true? Yeah, sometimes we have people leave our church. Well, I just couldn't find any friends there. Yeah, but you showed up sporadically. You didn't join a Bible study class. You didn't make any relationships. What do you mean you don't have any friends there? Relationships take work. Nothing of value is free. The treasure that we're looking for, the treasure that we need is patiently waiting for us to just turn around and take hold of his hand. Don't spend 2018 without him. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ this morning, this morning's the time. We're going to have a song in just a minute. Leah's going to come down here. They're going, to, they're going to sing a song. It's going to be a time of invitation for you to come down to the front. And we'd love to share with you how you can get eternal salvation in your life, how you can be a part of the family. Um, or maybe you just need to come and pray with me or some of the other uh, people that will be here at the front. Maybe you just need to come get on your knees. Let me ask you, will 2018 be exactly the same as 2017 in your life? You, you guys realize that, um, you know, when you start looking at retirement, you start thinking, you know, I probably, probably ought to put a dollar or two away because retirement's coming up. You, you make an investment, right? You're making an investment in the future. What investment are you making in your relationship with Jesus Christ? It's an investment. I, 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 uh, I have a, a book that I haven't finished yet. It's called Investment Marriage. And marriage is an investment. You invest in your spouse love and attention and all those things that you invest in your spouse. Why do you do that? Because when you're fixing to celebrate your 50th wedding anniversary, you actually want there to still be some love there. Right? You invest in your relationships. You invest in your relationship with your friend. What kind of investment are you going to put in your relationship with Jesus Christ this year? What is going to be different this year for you in terms of Jesus Christ than last year? What's going to be different? Let's pray.